this guy gets me so excited. I have to start the new year with him, Terry, because we're going to build good golf swings from the ground up. Terry Hashimoto, welcome to the show. Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year, Mark, and Happy New Year to everybody watching. I'm so excited to be with you guys. It's crazy, man. <laughs> Terry, you're the best guy to text because when I get texts from you, they're like exploding emojis and happy faces and rockets. And, and I mean, you just seem like you are all guns blazing here for what you're about to share. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, Mark, when we started Body Track uh, nearly 13 years ago, actually 13 years, almost to the, to the month now, uh, we really didn't do a good job of educating the market. So yeah. one of the reasons I asked you to, if I could come back and share with your good friends, we now have finally put into place the proper educational tools for people to, you know, all get on the same page with pressure mapping. And and I and I'm not doing it for the money either. The first section is free for the people so that they can learn how to use and read all the proper graphs they need to understand. Awesome. We'll get to we'll share that information toward the end of this conversation. Um, Terry, quickly. What have you been up to? Because you joked with me, you're like, because I did this, that's why I can talk to you for the rest of my life. What you been up to since you've been last on the show? Well, we have uh, developed a new training program, as you know, it's called mm -hmm. golfrehab.com. But the opening up the kimono to the end game, we are developing a, well, we're part of an app now that we're going to be able to share with your, with the coaches Mm -hmm. that they can do online education through our new app and we're going to crowdsource it for them, but we're not sharing this with everybody. We're only going to be doing it with like-minded people. We're also after the truth, Mark. We, yeah. There's a lot of guys out there that have got some ideas that, you know, maybe make sense or maybe don't. We don't care as long as it, as long as they understand the fundamentals of pressure mapping. So as long as it fits in, we are going to be crowdsourcing the consumer to the golf pro and we have developed, I'm, I'm a part of a new program that's going to allow the golf pro and the coaches for training physical therapists to share their ideas with the planet. That's and right. I cannot tell you how excited I am about this. We're launching it at the show, Mark. It is insane. It's called WAP, W-H-O-P. I know. I, I know just enough to be dangerous. And you make a good point earlier because, you know, thanks to you, I have a body track mat. It's in my garage teaching studio. I love it. And I know about the COP, the center of pressure, and I know what it should look like. But like I say, again, I know just enough to kind of be helpful and also a little dangerous. And that's why I'm, I'm so glad personally, why you are going where you're going with this, because there is a treasure trove of information and golf swing improvement stuff that come out of the ground. I mean, it, always in the back of my head, I've got Sam Sneed saying, you know, good golf swings are built from the ground up, and, and you guys are now proving this. Well, curling up the toes was Sam Snead's greatest. I think when I when I saw the clip with Sam Snead curling up his toes, you know, I take off my shoes and curl up my toes when I'm not playing so well, and mm -hmm. just belting it. I mean, it worked for him, but why did it work for him? And that's what we did is we figured out why it worked for him. And, you know, the toes, as we mentioned, are the braking mechanism of the foot. The heels are the acceleration portion of the foot. And if he's accelerating through his heels, he's going to be his kinematic sequence more in sync. So if you're accelerating through your toes, which is the braking mechanism, now the upper torso is going to be having to slow down to catch up with, speed up to catch up with your feet. And that's just not going to work. All right. You've teased people and they're like, wait, toes are breakers, heels are accelerators. The first time you said this to me, I'm like, yikes, that makes sense. Because if I'm moving toward the heels, my body's rotating. Okay. I'm going to let you share the screen. Don't screw okay. it up now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and while Cheers, Terry, Terry. We, we practiced this before we went live, folks. Uh, while Terry is sharing his screen, I, I'm going to just basically explain to you what we're going to do. Ke Terry is hooked up with the OnForm app, and Nate Hairgrove has been on the show before with OnForm. They've got a really cool golf instruction app. I use it. Terry and the Body Track folks um, have connected with them. So now you can do everything in one place. How are we doing over there, Terry? Yeah, I think so. I, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Uh, not just yet. Okay. Uh, hang on. Guys, there we go. technology Look. expert, not so much of an expert. Here we go, rock and roll. Well, you know how to use the feet. Uh, it's the mouth <laughs> that I'm going to teach you a little bit on. Okay, folks, for the audio listeners, I would recommend that you go and check this out on YouTube. We're going to do our best to describe what we're seeing. And right now I'm looking at Terry's desktop, and he's got some sweet images here of Two golfers um, basically videoed through the OnForm app 
and you can see their center of pressure traces and now he's toggling back and forth so terry go after it share the folks share with the folks what you're looking at and what is the importance over here all right so what we're going to see here mark is the flow of energy between your feet and we call this a pressure trace okay upstairs here we've got a, a good friend of mine a a Korean pro in his own right, Ian Doig. And then below that is Roberto Diaz. Yeah, okay. And they're both excellent players. But watch in the top screen how the flow of energy is through Ian's toes. And watch below yeah. how uh, Roberto, his energy is flowing underneath in the trace. Okay. Now, what for the audio listener? I'm looking at a screen here where yes. the pressure trace, we're looking at a rectangle. It's got a crosshair in the middle of it. And there's numbers that represent the pressure in the heel and the pressure in the toe. And as Terry is toggling through these swings, you can see those those numbers changing, whether the pressure is moving to the toes or the heels of the trail foot going back. And the top swing, you could see the pressure going to the toe, which is a stopper. That's a break right. where you can see Roberto, Corn Ferry Tour winner, uh, he turns back into the heel. And the pressure trace just moves back and forth. And And... and Roberto's line is a whole lot neater. It's a lot straighter. Uh, Terry, I'll let you keep it then. No, no this is it's an excellent summary, Mark. Um, now, the cool thing about this is, well, Ian's an excellent player, he, but he's not quite at the level that Roberto is. Yeah. And, you know, this is an, a flaw. The number one pressure flaw in golf is getting too much pressure into the toes. What's interesting in the lower level there is that Roberto actually gets too deep into the trail heel. And recently I posted, uh, you know, this is the major difference between a Turing Pro and an amateur, mm -hmm. is that a Turing Pro will get too deep into their trail heel. But notice where he gets too deep into the trail heel. As soon as Roberto takes that club back, he's already got 95% of his pressure into his trail heel. So now, he's got the left arm parallel with the ground for the audio folks. So Roberto's left arm parallel with the ground. And he's already got 95% of the pressure in his trailing heel. That's what Terry's recommending about guys getting, the really elite golfers getting too deep into the trail foot. And you know what? Uh, you, you know, our friend Jake Thurm, who's part of my new mm -hmm. company called Golf Rehab, he, he, he rebutted on the post. He said, maybe we should all be doing that. And right. I thought, you know, that's a heck of a good idea. So for the heck of it, a few of our my buddies and I, we started messing around. And we just lifted up our trail toe and just hit the ball from there. And we hit it pretty good. I knew this anyways, but may have done this before, but it works well. I will say this. Ernie Ellison, I think I've mentioned this to you before. And Ernie can swing it and hit it. I mean, he hits the ball in the middle of the club every single time. He said to me, he goes, I always play my best golf when I'm in my heels. Always. Um but I want you, before we even go back, because you're talking about this flow of energy, and I love the numbers, and you can see the pressure. Almost folks who have not seen this, you should get one, um, but it looks like if you look at a storm system, like the Doppler radar, like clouds forming, and and where the most pressure is, there's like a red cell, like a big thunderstorm there. Um, but the numbers on the side are fascinating me, because from the start, I want you to take them back to address, please. Talk about where pressure is in relation to left foot and right foot and then toes and heels and what you feel like is the most important um, for any golfer as they set up. Such a good question. And, you know, for our friends out there, you know, there are five key pressure positions, but one of them is at address. Okay. We never spent a lot of time talking about the ratio of total heel. We, we, we acknowledged early on, that the modern golfer sets up stronger on the lead side. Mm -hmm. And uh, we understand that to be the case. But what's interesting is what about where's their pressure relative to their toes and heels? And what we're seeing, if you take a look at Roberto, he's very deep into his heels at yeah. a dress position. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, Ian, not quite so much, but he's more pressure into his trail heel. Yeah. Now, what we're finding is the more we look into this is that at a dress position, the best players in the world are favoring their heels, both heels. And, 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 and that makes sense to me because it falls into our, our, our logic, which is toes that are brakes, heels are the accelerators. So if you want to get pressure into the trail heel or the trail side quick or the lead side quickly, you need to do it via your heels, not your braking mechanism, which are the toes. Mm -hmm. So 
this is just falls right into our sort of program. But this is a, a relatively new uh, point of review for us. We never really paid much of attention to, you know, is there a standard operating procedure for pressure into the toes and or the heels at the address position? And it turns out there is. And so just to summarize, folks, so the out of all the research Terry and his crew have done, heel pressure sort of evenly distributed at address, not like all heels, because you don't want to be out of balance, but athletically so. You just want to don't want to be in the toes too much, right? You want to be in the transverse proximal arch, which is where the where the ankle joins the foot and just a little bit behind that. And that's, you know, that's the ideal spot. But what's cool, Mark, is that as soon as you take the club back, that pressure is going to begin to go into the lead toe. Yeah, so it's not so. So here's the key, folks, because as you watch the pressure trace move back and forth, uh, it looks side to side. It's moving like that because it's your center of pressure and it's moving because from address, the pressure moves backward into the heel of the trail foot and forward into the toe of the lead foot. And that movement rotates the body from the ground up and moves the pressure trace to the right for the right hand. Am I saying that correctly? Correct. And look at on the lower case here. So as Roberto takes the club back, watch his left toe pressure increase significantly. Mm hmm now he's beginning to break on his lead side because the pressure is moving to the lead side. So now he's creating a wall to hit against. Yeah. Uh, but he releases the energy a little bit early. I'm going to show you another slide here in a second. And you, But as he gets it into his lead heel prior to impact. That's the secret to clearing properly. And if I can, I'm going to slip, slide over to another trace here. I'm so glad you did. And while he he, uh, he does that for the audio listeners, again, check this out on YouTube. Just search for Mark and Um This, the opening up, because this is a thing in golf now, rotation, you've got to open through contact. If your pressure is on your forward foot toward the toe, Terry, correct me if I'm, cra if I'm wrong, it is next to impossible to open up unless you only use your shoulders and your chest it will never come out of your thought. It'll be all upside down and out of kinematic sequence. Am I right? Oh, 100%. And this is a fairly new thing. Uh, when I say new, now what's cool about what you said is, I'm going to add one caveat to that, Mark. Okay. This this is Nick Flanagan, who's from Australia that won the US Amateur at Oakmont many years ago. And I believe he's a Corn Ferry winner as well. Mm -hmm. and we all know hitting ain't scoring, but in terms of what I see in terms of the traces, this would be a trace that I would say I would bet my last dollar on uh, if I could see the trace prior to a competition. And this is, he's clearing perpendicular to the target, perpendicular to the target, not around it, but perpendicular. So the pressure is going from his lead toe to his lead heel. He's at the top of his swing moving towards impact. And he's already got 91% of his pressure into his lead heel. He's already he's already started the breaking mechanism, and then he's clearing into his lead heel. And then now, what's in? Go ahead. I want to I want to say this because what Terry said it may sound like, like I can see I was visualizing, but then I looked at the image, and Nick Flanagan here, you can see how his legs are centered. You can see pressure in his knees. His arms are into the downswing, but his hands are still above his right shoulder. And his pressure has moved to the forward side. And get this, folks, his hands are above his shoulder at about the height of his ears. He has 91% of the pressure in the leading heel. He doesn't look spun out. He has not spun the chest. The chest is closed to the target, yet there's all that pressure in the forward heel. It is downright sexy. This is, uh, when I saw Nick, when I was working with, I wasn't working with him. He was testing shafts to be, Absolutely okay. honest. Uh, Nick's got his own way of thinking. He's a great, smart, he's a very intelligent player. And we were working with him in San Antonio testing shafts. When I saw this trace, he asked me what I thought. I said, I I, I, I can't use the words in on your show. Like it was, <laughs> like it was orgasmic. I can uh -huh. say that. Like it was like, this is perfect because what I'm going to show you uh, next is, 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 is also outstanding. And this is Justin James. Now, this is 
Former yes. world long driving champion, folks, Justin James. He's been on the show. He talked about his kettlebell routine. This guy is a beast. Uh, right unbelievable. Now. He's a machine. And yeah. he's in a little bit earlier stage than Nick, but I, but this is what he does. He's breaking extremely hard on his lead toe. And then um, uh, now just because. Well, again, I, for the audio listener, I want to describe this. So this is Justin, because I know the length of his backswing. It's longer than this. He looks like he's hands above head, shaft just slightly short of parallel. Um, the pressure trace has gone back and forward, but even though the club's going back, he's already got almost 90% of the pressure in his forward toe, folks. So, so think about this. His club's still going back, yet his center of pressure has moved forward into that forward foot. And man, he's loading up that thing so he can jump and turn and do whatever he needs to get out of the way of it, right? And then if you go to section five in the first course, you're going to see him clear dirt perpendicular to the target like Nick. Now, the funniest thing about this, Mark, from my perspective, is when we started pressure mapping, guys would say, you can't have the same trace in your driver as you do in your irons if you're a good player, if you're a long hitter. I said, I, I, you know, I, whatever. But the truth is the longest hitters on the planet, the ones that can keep it within the grid the most, have mm -hmm. a linear trace. So, I mean, Nick Flanagan versus the world's long drive champion, both have a linear trace, both really good, and they both clear perpendicular to the target. Okay, And you I know just, what? That's just, the number one way to avoid injuries. Yes. Fantastic. I want to mind that in a minute. But just in the interest of understanding, because that's always my goal for all of our fans, um, we're all about understanding. So when you say a linear trace, I want you to describe that for the listener and once again, just visit the perpendicular to the target because, and just me personally, I was the best spinner out of a golf shot you ever imagined because I read the Ben Hogan Modern Fundamentals book and I got it all wrong, okay? And so I was a weak ball striker. I was good, but I was didn't, never got the most out of it. So I want you to talk about the linear trace, describe that, and Absolutely. then again, the perpendicular to the target, please. So there's a line going back. I don't know if you can see my cursor going back on mm -hmm. on. Justin's trace there, but there's a line going back and then a line going through towards the target. When you're line on line, that's linear. There's a slight gap in between it, but that's very minor. The bigger the gap between the line going back and the line going through, the more the dispersion, the opportunity for making an error. And the line represents what? It's the flow of energy between your feet, but that's actually the for that's the average of all the forces created by gravity when mm -hmm. you stand on the pressure mat. It's not your center of mass, it's the center of pressure. So when you stand on the pressure mat, and you know, please go to the free section, it's absolutely free to take a look at this. It tells you what it is. And it's the, it's the average of all the forces created by gravity when you stand on a pressure mat. And then when you move side by side, not your body, when you just tap your feet, you'll see the energy going right, left, right, left, right, left, and into mm -hmm. your toes, into your heels, toes, heels, toes, heels. Yeah. So it's it moves fast. It's easy to read, and it and it and it's and it, and it really is the absolute truth in terms of how stable you are during your swing. Okay, I think I'm a little. I'm a golf swing nerd. You know me, um, and both my girls they went to gymnastics when they were very young, and so my wife is she's the smarts in our operation by the by the longest way. And she, she's got vision. So because the girls were in gymnastics and there were all these routines, she bought a balance beam, not the one like they use in competition, but just the beam that you laid down on the ground. So they could work on balance and walking and straightness and stuff. So I now am using that balance beam to give golf lessons. Because <laughs> if you're on that balance beam, right, and you're trying to make a swing, you can just figure out quickly enough that if you're tilting from one side to the other too much on that balance beam, that's likely your center of pressure not being linear as you're going from one side to the other. Am I right? Absolutely correct. I'm using a new tool that I'm testing called Axios Core. Okay. And um, it was developed by a fellow named uh, Brian Doyle. You can Google it, Axios Core. And they've assigned to me a trainer. Her name is Jackie D. Martino, and she's killing me. But um, they, they, it's a board that's got lights on it that will tell you if when you're out of balance or not it turns yellow i mean it turns green or red okay and you can feel that anyways you only you know and 
but it's to your point, and it's an amazing. You don't hit balls on it, but it, it's it's for proprioception and working your upper torso as well when you're uh, when you're on the ground with it. There's a whole bunch of ways to use it, mm -hmm. but it's absolutely nuts. And it's like what you're saying. The Sheptic board was an early, you know, precursor for what we're talking about. And then I I saw John Tillery use a skateboard to um, to teach his guys how to maintain balance left right and into your toes and heels. And that's another good way, but a little dangerous. JT yeah. is a little bit nuts, but uh, in a positive way, JT. But nice. the um, <laughs> you know like but to any board at all that's got some sort of uh, you know the there's a ball underneath it that's going to make you have to find your 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 balance side to side and toe to heel. That's a great vehicle to to work with as long as you're in a you know keep it safe. You don't want to fall off that thing. I've posted this drill before. I'll probably repost it too. Where for people that you know, I see so many golf swings where you got a rolly feet, right? You swing back and you roll to the outside of the foot and your way through. There's a lot of foot roll over and that's messy. Um, and so I just lay an alignment rod down on the ground that's parallel with the target line. Yeah, then perfect. you address, you stand on the alignment rod. So it's sort of just through the arches of the feet. And then on the back swing, I want you to feel the pressure move to, to the body side of the alignment rod. So you basically go heels and toes, and then you flip flop that. And you'll see if you're watching yourself in a mirror when you do that, how rotary the action then becomes. That's worthwhile, right? Oh, it's totally, totally cool. Um, one of the things we're experimenting with now with our online, uh, with Jake Thurman, uh, our, our, some of the coaches that are on our golf rehab team, is we're, we're, we're trying to use easy uh, methods to train with. So mm -hmm. to your point, that's a good one. What we like to see guys do is take a two by four, about four feet long, and just initially uh, put your toes on the two by four, keeping the pressure in the heels, just taking a few swings, progressively building up the speed. Perfect. And then learning how to use what it feels like to, to get into the heels of both feet. And that's going to increase your rotation both sides. And then once they get used to that feeling, what we do is we get them to um, uh, stand in Dorsey uh, um, in their trail heel and plant her on her lead, which is uh, Dorsey's up. Uh, so your toes up on your trail and plant her is toes down and yeah. take a few swings. And they will feel the rotation increase on their trail side. And they will feel the resistance on the lead side because you're you're in your toes. And then what we get them to do next is we get them to practice clearing perpendicular on the lead side. So now they're beginning to open up the hips in a very modern way. And it's also it, and it's it's keeping their kinematic sequence in sync because the pressure is going to allow it's going to drag the hips, the shoulders, the arms, and the hands with them through the sequence, as opposed to hitting over the top and the hands initiating the arms and then everything else being out of sequence. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to segue this to the perpendicular description. I wanted you to talk about again, but I remember back in the day when Nick Feldo was rebuilding the swing alongside David Ledbetter, because um, Feldo was very leggy, sort of legs were soupy underneath them, lots of knee drive, very old school, lots of fall back and hand action through contact. He would stand there for hours where he'd take his lead leg, pull it out the way, so he's a little open with his low body, chest square, wind up, pressure into the heel, and then his toe on the front foot. And then as he turned out of the way, you could see him go, even though he's open, go and plant that lead foot. So he was basically hitting on his left toe for a while. But as he would go through, he'd go into his follow through. And he just became so rotary. And look, the rest was history. I, I don't care what anybody tells me. Uh, I, I know this to be true because I'm there. As you get older, you lose rotational forces. Mm -hmm. And we all know that golf is a combination of, of rotary, lateral, and vertical forces. Yeah. You know, I can move as fast as I want laterally because I'm fantastic that way. I was taught by Bob Toskey, which is sort of the Ballard method in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not saying Toskey copied Ballard. What I meant is they both were lateral guys. But as you get older, Mark, you, you know, you're too young yet. But when you start losing your rotational speed, that hip speed's hard to get back. So that drill you just laid out is perfect. Tremendous. Okay perpendicular um you said clearing perpendicular to the target just describe that one more time and then i want to get to uh your other graphs you have so i've got nick flanagan back up on the screen because i had i had justin james at a different position justin james was at a much earlier position is and and now you now he does what nick does he clears directly into the lead heel but you can see that line in that cop graph is that it's perpendicular to the target it's not on an angle it's perpendicular to the target 
He's, he's clearing perpendicular. He's moving the pressure from his lead toe to his lead heel very quickly. And now he's freeing up his body. So he's going to prevent injuries because now he can rotate clearly around his body without injuring his lead side. So that's the key to the, that's the secret. One of the secrets is two of them, in my opinion, doing this and lining up your joints at impact. Those are the secrets to safe distance. Yeah. Hey folks, um, the aha moment is this, the pressure trace, which moved linear, almost in a horizontal line back and through clearing perpendicular, that pressure trace on Nick Flanagan's image. Again, you can go see this on YouTube went from linear or horizontal and it turned straight downward. It was went from it went from east to west and then straight to south. And so that's how well he cleared. There was no rolling over in that forward leg. The front knee, I'm sure, never got beyond the front ankle. It was pure clearing and the pressure was moving backward into the heel. And that opens everything up and it allows the club really to free will all the way to the follow through. Yes. Absolutely correct. And then I want to show you here again, Justin James. And you can see clearly here, he's in the 59 and it was lead healed. This is at the address position. Okay. Um, this is clearly before his hands move. If you had this on video, it'd be even more clear, but you can see the club position at the ball. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that little forward press. He's got 70% of the pressure on his lead side. Now this is very common in what we're seeing with the longest hitters on the world, but not only is JJ long, he's straight, relatively speaking for his category of, of golf. And then you take a look at, we're seeing more and more tour players, the ones that we're getting the traces of that are major winners. They're setting up more on their heels than we thought they did initially. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a very critical thing to look at because now he, it, this is how you initiate your backswing. He's, he's going to move from his lead heel into his lead toe as he goes back. I love it. Now we've got some other charts and graphs here that um, you know a lot of people are interested in the vertical forces. I thought maybe you might like to take a look at this. I would. And yeah, folks, this is completely self-serving for me because when I use my <laughs> pressure tracing, my, 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 my body track pressure trace, I look at the trace back and forth. I can see if someone's out of whack, we can fix that because I understand how one needs to move between heels and toes. Um, but this stuff, when the movement occurs, I'm, uh, I know just enough to be dangerous, I think. So <laughs> well, I have at it, the Terry. The vertical forces are relatively easy. Um, the there are two times when you break: once on your trail side, and the second time is once on your lead, uh, next on the lead side. When the club is when your lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way back, typically that's when a good player will press down hard into the trail heel to move pressure to the lead side. Okay. In this case, what we're looking at this is one of our golf rehab teammate members, Stuart Bannantine who's an excellent player. He was a college player, played, tried to play pro golf, then moved on to become a master fitter, working with TaylorMade and bringing PXG to Canada. But his lead arm is parallel to the ground on the way down. Mm -hmm. And you can see that this is at the top peak here, that blue peak. That's the maximum vertical pressure on his lead side. In this case, that's 1.1 times his body weight. So when you stand on a pressure mapping system of any type, uh, you know, we yes, we sell body track, but we're but we are a ubiquitous company at this point mm -hmm. with regards to education. This will show up in the V1, or it shows up in the Swing Catalyst, or the S2M, or the GASP system. There'll be a form of vertical forces, and what all of us seem to be doing is the same thing. When you stand on the pressure mat of any type, we give you a unit, a body unit of one, so yeah. that we measure the relative value of the increase in the vertical forces relative to you okay and the tour average in total is about 1.5 during the swing Stu is an excellent golfer hits a six iron about 200 hits his driver about 295 to 305 carry mm -hmm. and he's generating a total of 1.3 times his body weight so that's not bad tour guys is about 1.5 but let's also take into consideration here is that when you break on your lead side prior to impact what you're doing is you're creating effectively a wall that you're hitting against so that you're so that when you're slowing down on your lead side, now your hands can rapidly accelerate past it. It's like yeah. two cars going down a highway at the same speed. Now, if your feet represent the car that's about to brake, all of a sudden, if you rapidly put on the brakes, now your hands go rapidly past it. Gotcha. And that's exactly what the issue is here. 
So the Wait. harder, faster you break, the faster your hands will accelerate past the break. Sensational. You've explained the concept. This is the vertical force measure. Uh, everyone gets a value of one. And as we look at the graph here um, over Stuart, uh, again, it's a graph and there's up the, I can't remember which was X and Y. <laughs> well, it tells you here that why you don't have to remember it because it's the, it, it's, I forget X, Y, and Z all the time. And so well, we there's mark the horizontal, off. there's the horizontal measure that looks like it's in seconds. And then the vertical measure of the graph, that is the pressure or the vertical force. And then there are three different bars. Yeah, there's a yellow, there's a blue and an orange. Describe what those are as we're looking at them. The blue one represents the vertical forces on the lead side. Okay. The, the yellow one or the gold one represents the vertical forces on your trail side. And then the orange one represents the total at all times. So although I'm showing you a, a fixed picture, this is actually live in the graphs that when you see it. So you can, okay. you can go to any part of the swing and see what the vertical forces are at those key points. Incredible. So, and, and obviously folks, as you would imagine, because the force is moving from one side to the other. So as the blue side, the forward side went lower, the trail side, there was more vertical force or pushing to the ground or making oneself heavier. And then as you transition into the downswing and there's a vertical line, I guess that that vertical line is impact. The uh, that vertical line represents the position that, that like he's, the, he's oh, at where he currently is. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, you, there's massive downward force in the forward side and then uh, not as much in the heel side. So, so you can see the relationship between the two sides as the body rotates back and through. Sorry, I didn't mean to flip the screen on you so quickly. Now we're at the velocity chart mm -hmm. and the velocity chart uh, represents the lateral speed and heel to toe speed. Now this is one of the most misinterpreted charts and graphs that we have ever, uh, we didn't do a good job explaining this, but I understand That's why you're here. That's why we have you on the on the mark show. <laughs> Go. Sorry. So this is how I made my uh, uh, how I built up whatever little of reputation I've got. <laughs> These little spikes uh, that where that vertical line is that that uh, it, you are actually right, Mark. That's impact. Okay. So the um, these little spikes going up and down those two little spikes prior to that peak spike. And that peak spike, we call that peak velocity. That's the point in time when he's moving the fastest towards the lead side. But these little spikes up and down represent restrictions where his body is speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, then speeding up, and now slowing down towards impact. Now, don't let this confuse you because, uh, but this is in Nick Flanagan's chart, and you'll see this in the freebie section one. So okay. go to it and, and, and see it for free. He's, he's one spike up, one spike down because he doesn't have any restrictions on the way back and the way down. Stuart, in this case, does have restrictions. So this is the beginning mark where we can begin to use um, the pressure mapping tools to understand if a golfer has any physical restrictions in, in on their body during their swing. Can I isolate what the physical restrictions are? No. But yeah. what but I can tell you what side of the body they're on. And I'm going to show you how you can see that in the COP chart as well. But this is the velocity. Uh, side to side is the white line. And toe to heel is the gold line. Again, folks, it's just a graph. Um, and there's a white line, which is the lateral movement. And what's surprising, and Terry, I, I want you to elaborate on this, please. You know, people have heard, well, you got to shift your weight from back in the day. And then they shift back and they go backwards laterally too long. And then they way late and then their upper body has to react. Then they come over the top and they wonder why. And then on the way down, then they're like, well, I've got to get through it. So they're shifting laterally too long and not turning. Where this, the change in direction. Yeah. It's a lot, I don't want it fast as dangerous because it's not a vigorous move. But in relation to you know, transferring from left to right, you are forward a long way, long time before the club's down. And then the body slows down so the club can catch up and slingshot to get back to your race car comparison. That, that's exactly it. That's that, that, that. I mean, a bull whip is, is, is my favorite uh, analogy in terms mm -hmm. of um, uh, now this is 
my, a bull whip is my favorite analogy where it snaps just prior to impact, creating yeah. supersonic speed. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing when you're braking. You're braking on your lead side so that the hands can rapidly accelerate past it. But this is the final slide I've got with the graphs and the charts. But this is a, a I'm not, I, I actually forgot his name. I apologize. I'm having a senior moment. But mm -hmm. he won his first European tour event. Uh, he's from Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, about two years ago, he came uh, right out, as soon as I got out of the hop, and he hasn't had a very good. He's been working on his game since. Um, we were a little bit uh, into the Baileys when we were doing this at uh, one of my <laughs> friends' backyards. I was waiting to catch a plane to home, and he was waiting to catch a, a flight to go some someplace in Israel to play a golf tournament. We were sharing a friend's house, uh, Matt Averill, down in Orlando. But you're going to see the restriction right here. You can see this trace right here. Yeah. Can you see the little zigzag? Mm -hmm. He's at impact now, but if you now that you've seen what a trace is, you can see how he's getting into his toes. But you're going to see this little sort of uh, hesitation where that cursor is rolling. Yeah. And I said to him, "If you got any injuries on your trail side, in fact, he had he had uh, knee surgery on his trail side, and so this restriction is something that he has to work. Uh, he has to get around. And how can he get around it? Well, if he's got a serious injury, you can't." You're going to have to learn how to live with it. Yeah. But the point of it is this, is that once you, if you can identify the injury, which side of the body it is, part of our goal is to connect the golf coach with the proper physical therapist that is a golf specializing in golf so that they can work on these injuries to reduce the restrictions. Because when you are in a restricted mode, all you're going to be doing is compensating to get ball, to get pressure to the lead side somewhere. And when you're compensating what happens to your body, you're hurting some part of your body. Yeah. Hey, as I look at that pressure trace, and incidentally, it was videoed on the On Forum app, which has got a cool feature where it shows the joints of your body too. So you can see how things are lining up. And you heard Terry say, you want to joints over each other at impact. Um, that pressure trace there is not as linear as a, as a Flanagan for argument's sake. So not only was there that zigzag where you moved forward and then backed up, he looks like on the downswing, things are working way too long and too far towards his toes. Is, am I reading that correctly? And he's not winning. Um, and, we <laughs> okay. a lot of, uh, uh -huh. and, we, and we had a lot of discussion about this. Um, you know, the, the, I can say this now because it, the uh, limitations of statutes of limitations are long gone. But yeah. when we were first uh, learning how to use pressure mapping, there was a, for a few early adopters at the university level. And I had, was given the opportunity, and you know, it's a little bit unfair to the players because, you know, there's always the human component. Mm -hmm. But um, the coaches would send me the, the guy's traces and they'd say, which player is going to be more consistent this week? That's very easy to predict. Okay. Uh, I would tell you when I look at this trace that this golfer has no chance of winning a tournament the next week. He's going to have to with that pressure trace because for the audio listeners, it went back okay. And yep. now he's at impact. You can see there's been movement way towards the toes. And then the rotation to the lead heel side has been slow. Um, so there's going to have to be probably a very inside out swing path with a lot of hand action through contact, judging yeah. by what the trace says. Yeah, there's there's no question. Like, you know, the 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 hands are the joker in the in the stack of cards. Yeah. Um, but you know, they can compensate and do a lot of things, both positive and negative. But I like to I, I always tell my my friends and my players and my coaches, you know, the hands choke, the feet won't. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can slip yeah. and slide, but um, but generally speaking, um, if, if you can uh, unlock your feet uh, just by moving them left, right, left, right, left, right, and then knowing where to put pressure at address, it frees up your hands to go into whatever position they should based on your own personal physiology. And uh, I'm not a, a tree hugger or a natural guy and saying, look, everything comes natural in life. Mm -hmm. But I, there's there's one word that I really hate. It's gravity. I hate it because when I drive and my pen goes from one side of the or my phone slips out of my pocket and goes <laughs> into the corner of the. Uh, yeah, you know what's happening next. And, and gravity just sucks. But if we can learn how to tap into gravity properly. Mm -hmm. And not force gravity by putting ourselves into a position that we can't replicate all the time. We're going to have a better chance for success. And I have found, objectively speaking, that we can reduce the tension in your upper torso by 
focusing in on the pressure and where our feet is just by tapping left, right, left, right, left, right. And you see the monster hitters today going bang, 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 Sounds bang. Like You're right, yeah. and, 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 you know, a guy sent me, Mark, I promise I'll shut up, but a guy sent me a, a video uh, criticizing me. He was saying that, Terry, you know, this leading expert in biomechanics, Quantz, was saying uh, it's not just about how hard you press into the ground, but you got to have rhythm and timing. Well, no shit, Dick Tracy. I understand you got to have timing and rhythm. I mean, you need a biomechanic degree in that. Keep in mind, we've got lots of biomechanics on our team. But I mean, do I need? But it, and I'll shut up. But but hitting the modern way of playing today is a lot more about hitting than swinging, in my opinion. I agree. But yes, the thing: if you want rhythm and timing, it comes from the extremities. And and if the music starts playing you will find you start tapping your feet a lot quicker than what you <laughs> put your fingers. Think about that for a minute, right? And then you get the uncomfortable dancer who has to go and dance on the dance floor. He or she's not waving their arms around. They're just moving their feet back and forth from one side to the other. And if they get a little frisky, they will be a little hip shimmy. But that hip shimmy only happens when pressure's moving in the feet because if you glue your feet to the ground, you can't turn from side to side. No. No. Well, there's a great video clip from the 60s or 50s with Fred Astaire golfing. A swing yeah. dancing around and hitting the ball. Apparently, he was a scratch player in his day. But I mean, footwork is everything. You know, we, we in in our course we talk about golf dance, and as silly as the name that is, you know, I really when I watched all the old clips of Hogan going all the way up to the modern guys like Scheffler, they all have a, a rhythm in their feet that that sets them apart from each other. But the basics are left, right, left, right, left. And yeah. and you always end up on that lead side before you pull the trigger. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before, but if you don't know what initiates your backswing, forget it. I mean, like you don't get in your car and put it in drive before you start the engine and your feet are the are the key. It it separates you from the rest of the pack. You see guys just stand up there statically. I mean, I'll drop as much money as I got if I got the right amount of strokes, because he's frozen. Um mm -hmm. You know, and getting strokes, by the way, is the secret to winning gambling. You got, <laughs> you know, but but I mean, like you you when you're static, you're dead. A lot of golfers will go for a lesson with their club professional or whoever, and and you'll typically hear, well, you're flipping your hands, or you're too handsy, or you want to um, go from too much extension in your wrist to more flexion through contact. Well, the react, yeah, I can. You, if you're watching on YouTube, you would have seen Terry look up to his right and sort of shake his head. <laughs> The hands and the wrists are a necessary evil, right? Yeah. And if you're not moving properly between your feet, and if you're moving beyond your swing's boundaries or outside of your feet, either left or right or north and south, and you're out of balance, your hands are what save you. So I'm going to let you leave this with the listener and the viewer, that if you want to eliminate excess hand action through contact, move properly between your feet but to allow your body to rotate better first. You got the mic. Amen. I mean, that's as I can't add to that. I mean, that's as well said as anybody could ever say it. The the, the hands are the wild card. Uh, they can save you and they can kill you. But mm -hmm. if I move putting your feet in the right position at the right time, it frees up the hands to do what they got to do. And I and I and that's the only natural thing about me is is I'll say you you, you nailed it, Mark. I mean, that is as well as it can be said. Well, I learned from you. Okay, um, let's help folks because now it's the new year. We're going to do this properly. We're going to build from the ground up so they yep. can get the OnForm app in the App Store, the Body Track Mat, or, or they go and get your system. To tell folks where they can go to get those things, please. Go to golfrehab.com, mm -hmm. just like it's spelled, golfrehab.com. We, we have a new team. We've got Jake Thurm. We've got Dr. Hayden Atkinson, PhD, postdoctoral sciences at Western University in London, Ontario. We're going to be talking about fitting. We're going to be talking about how to tweak your clubs. We've, but more significantly, we're going to be talking about how to use the ground properly, uh, not only to gain optimal distance, but so that you can avoid injuries. And if you see restrictions, we're going to connect you with the proper physical therapist that's going to put you on the right course with your sports trainer, and we're going to do it online. It's a modern way of doing things, Mark, as you know. I mean, do you know, as, as we all know, it's the first time in the history of the universe where we have more golfers that don't play on golf courses than there are golfers playing on the golf course. And so this is the golden era of golf, Mark. 
I am so excited. I swear to my on, my on my father's grave, I've never been more excited to be a part of the golf world than I am today because we can finally do it without me having to go into a jet airplane and travel 250 days a year like you do. Yeah. And you can do it injury free if you listen to Terry. Where can they follow you? Golfrehab.com, Mark, and Terry Hashimoto on any Instagram, Facebook, all the sites. But if they go to golfrehab.com, click the online courses, all my social media are up there and all the reviews. And thanks to everybody and, and happy 2024. This is going to be an amazing year. And Mark, thanks for seeking out the truth sincerely. Of course, my friend, I appreciate you so very much. Likewise. Likewise.